rational expressions. A complex rational expression is technically not a quotient of two rational expressions. The difference is that we can see if we look at this expression in the numerator here, it's not a single rational expression, but it is an expression with more than one rational term. As soon as we have more than one rational term, either in the numerator or the denominator, we can see that this is a complex rational expression and needs a slightly different process than simply dividing rational expressions. So, we have two different methods that we are going to use to approach something like this. And the first one, which we will call method one, involves changing the form of this so that it is a quotient of two rational expressions. To do that, we're going to combine the terms in the numerator over the LCD, and then repeat the same process for the denominator. So using this method, we have two different LCDs, as the case may be. We have an LCD from the numerator and another one from the denominator. We'll contrast this with method two after we have gone through this process once. So, starting with method one, we have this expression, and the first thing I'm going to do is identify my LCDs. I have only one denominator in this expression in the numerator, so the LCD of my numerator is y. I have only one denominator down in the denominator, so meaning the denominator of the denominator, and that is an x. And so the LCD of my denominator is x. Only using this method can we have separate LCDs for the numerator and denominator. Because what we're going to do is work on each of them individually. So I'll have a large dividing line here to separate them. I take my 1 over y, and this expression I'm going to leave alone because it already has the LCD in the, numer or the denominator. Then my second term is 2, which I will write as 2 over 1. This is the term that I'm going to modify because I want it to have the LCD, which in the numerator is y, as its denominator. So I will multiply this expression by y over y. In the meantime, I'll also get set up with the denominator. My first expression is 1 over x. It already has the LCD of the denominator as its denominator, so I will leave that term alone. My second term I'll write as 3 over 1, and I can see that its denominator is missing a factor of x, so that term I will multiply by x over x. Now just to be clear, I am only multiplying this term 3 over 1 by the x over x, and this term 2 over 1 by the y over y. This is not something I am multiplying by the whole denominator or the whole numerator. So that in the next step, what I have is 1 over y plus 2y over y in the numerator, and then 1 over x minus 3x over x in the denominator, so that now we can see I do have common denominators in these two terms in the denominator, and I have common denominators in these two terms in the numerator, and I'm ready to go ahead and combine each of those to write this then as 1 plus 2y over y divided by 1 minus 3x over x. Make sure that you remember these are not like terms. The 1 plus 2y and the 1 minus 3x. And because they are not like terms, when we combine, sometimes we use the word combine when we combine this over a common denominator. It doesn't mean that we combine the terms into a single term. It just means that we combine both of these rational expressions 
into a single rational expression. So that has to remain as two separate terms. This is now a quotient of two rational expressions. We can think of that middle bar as a division symbol, and I have a whole rational expression on the top and a whole rational expression on the bottom, and what this means is that I am ready to go ahead and flip over the rational expression that we are dividing by and change that division to a multiplication during the same step. So that I can now write this as 1 plus 2y over y times, since we're flipping this other one over, it becomes x over 1 minus 3x. And at this stage, we start to look for common factors. 1 minus 3x is a whole factor. 1 plus 2y is a whole factor. We can't cancel any part of that without canceling the whole thing. And since we don't have any common factors here, we're just going to collect up all the remaining factors and put them together into our answer. So generally, the uh, monomial factor comes first when we're writing these in factored form. I'll write that as x times 1 plus 2y over y times 1 minus 3x. It's fine to leave this in factored form since in the rational expression topics that's generally what we're going for. It's also fine if you multiply this out. Sometimes people do it just instinctively without really thinking about whether or not it's necessary. So this would also be a perfectly acceptable answer, x plus 2xy over y minus 3xy. The reason we sometimes like to leave things in factored form in this topic is that it's a little bit easier to compare two different answers that are in factored form than it is two different answers that are multiplied out. It's also true that sometimes the process of multiplying out is a little bit tedious and not of very much value. We'll now look at this same expression using method 2 and hopefully we will get the same answer or answers. In method 2 we want to start by finding the LCD of the entire expression. For method 2, we cannot have two separate LCDs. This is a very important distinction. So in the numerator, I have y as my only denominator. And in the denominator, I have x as my only denominator. So I'm going to consider all of this when finding the LCD. So my LCD of the entire expression is xy. Now, if we scroll back up to where we were talking about method 2 in the beginning, method 2 involves finding the LCD of the entire expression, as we just discussed, and then multiplying the whole expression by LCD over LCD. This is going to clear the denominators on the individual levels, and we'll see exactly why that is. All right, so I'm going to multiply this whole thing by xy over xy. This is a very quick process if you can visualize all these computations in your head. It's not really any quicker than method one if you write things out in great detail. The first time through, though, I will write things out in great detail just so that it's clear what's going on. So I have this xy in the numerator that is getting multiplied by both of these terms. So let's just focus on that first. I have 1 over y and that is getting multiplied by xy. I'm going to write that as xy over 1. My second term is plus 2. It also gets multiplied by xy. There's no reason to write it as xy over 1 
for the second term because I'm not multiplying a fraction by a fraction. The over 1 just makes it a little bit easier to see in this first term that the y's will cancel. Now looking at the denominator, I have 1 over x as my first term. I'm taking this xy from the denominator and multiplying it by both terms now. So my 1 over x gets multiplied by just a single xy, which I will write as xy over 1. And then my minus 3 term also gets multiplied by xy, and so I will write that as just minus 3 times xy. So looking at this now, we can see that the black factors came from the original expression, and the red factors came just from the multiplication by xy over xy. So in the next step, I'm going to see what cancels and what stays. I have a y in the numerator here and a y in the numerator here. Those are going to drop out, leaving me with just x in that first expression, that first term. The second term is still 2xy. And now let's look at the denominator and see in the denominator what stays and what goes. I can now see that these x's here are on opposite sides of the fraction, so they will drop out. And all I have remaining there is a y. And then minus 3xy in the remaining term. My final answer then, which I'm ready to box, is x plus 2xy over y minus 3xy. We came to the multiplied out version first this time, whereas we came to the factored form first using the other method. If we wanted to keep going on this and factor it, we could factor x out of the numerator to get 1 plus 2y, and factor y out of the denominator to get 1 minus 3x, and check for common factors. But there's no real reason to factor this other than to check for the possibility of common factors that might drop out. We can see that this is the same answer that we got using method 1.